Good afternoon, everyone. Last time we talked about the definition of or the meaning or the kind of questions linear regression answers. Basically, be very sensitive when you're writing your research question. You have one variable um, uh, um, affecting another variable, then you will use linear regression and you will write the hypotheses as my hypothesis is that uh, the age over here is affecting the um, mm, the age over here is affecting the height of the baby. Here's the age in months, and here is the height in uh, centimeters. All right. Now uh, we also talked about the linear regression. Usually, is why. It takes the form of y equal a, which is a is an intercept, plus bx. So a is an intercept when x is equal to 0. However, yesterday, we also, or, or last time, we also discovered that the power of, uh, of this uh, 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 prediction power, or estimation power of this uh, form, uh, 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 equation or of this model is the highest uh, around the borders or border lines of the minimum and maximum data set. Meaning, if we use, uh, of course, we um, uh, found out that uh, we found out that the uh, formula, the equation here is as follows, insert and scatter, and then we just right click, uh, trend line, linear, I'd like to display the equation and the r squared. And here is the linear line, which is the best fit line. We talked about this as well. And we found out that the height, which is uh, y, is equal to 64.2, uh, sorry, 0.92, okay, 8, uh, plus uh, 0.635x. And when most of you, when we talked about what does the intercept means, we said, all right, uh, x over here is the age. When the age is equal to zero, which is at birth. So when the baby is at birth, uh, then the uh, height here is 64 centimeters. But based on reality, there is no baby really that its height is about 64 centimeters. Actually, the max is maybe 52, 53. I don't know, uh, maybe there are giant babies 54 centimeters, but I have never heard of a super giant baby of 64 centimeters. And I don't care about what I hear, you don't care about what I hear, uh, uh, sorry, what I hear. Uh, you just can check on the internet and check the average height of either male or female. It's never gonna be 60 or above 60. So what does that mean? This means that this linear line uh, has a very powerful prediction power around and uh, with the least error possible because this is an error that the baby at birth is 64. It's an error and it's a big error because if it is 54 centimeters maximum, which is also an exaggeration, which an average is 54 centimeters of a baby, then there is 10 centimeters difference. This is too much. <laughs> we never say plus minus 10 centimeters, my estimation. We usually say plus minus one, plus minus two, plus minus three in some cases depending on the case plus minus five uh, plus minus 10 centimeters for a baby 10 centimeters they get it over a couple of years so i would say um after the toddler uh, being a toddler so um i would say that this is a very good example to make you feel uh, and the, the importance to to make you really understand the importance of uh, uh getting the max the minimum if you are a researcher investigating the data and understanding uh, that uh, this data or uh, this kind of uh, prediction for x equals zero um, uh, if you want to predict something if you want to predict over uh, a higher uh, 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 range for example you want to come up with a model that predicts the height of the baby over their lifetime then you need to find to get data over their lifetime but if you want to uh, 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 come up with a model 
that predicts the height of the baby uh, when they are toddlers actually toddlers starting from 12 months i checked on the internet so um or fr from 18 months then you collect the data accordingly so this was my uh, goal from um, sharing with you uh, this kind of example i would like you to see that um, devising the main goal of the study is different than devising and coming up with the uh, with the uh, hypothesis hypothesis is as I, I said it's you saying that age as an independent variable I hypothesize that it does affect height uh, okay this is the, uh, the the hypothesis but the research question in general is can I come up with a model I would like to attempt to, to, to build and develop a model that it predicts babies' heights, actually not babies, but toddlers' heights from the age of 18 months to 29 months. That, so this is, I, I'm training you both ways to write a research, main research question. And the main research questions, basically, when you are a DBI student, mostly, or even business student, but specifically, if you are a, BE, a, B, a DBI student working with data, this is how you devise a research question, the main question of the study. So the main question is, I would like to build or uh, develop a model uh, 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 that predicts the height of the toddler uh, in the range of 18 months to uh, 29 months, because this is where the data that you uh, collected. At the very beginning, when the research is not very ripe, you just say, I would like to, to come up with a model or develop a model that predicts the height of the babies. Then you found out that you have access only to this kind of data. Then you need to go back again and pivot and edit your uh, question. All right, good, good. I hope that you, you have a better understanding that even though technically you can use this model to predict the baby, uh, baby's height at birth, but but if you are a manager in the future or, 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 I suggest that you always, always take a look at max of the, of the, of the data. Uh, when somebody is presenting to you, you take max or you take minimum. And also in the future, if your manager is trying to explain to you that, you know what, uh, your, your model cannot be really good for predicting this and that because your model data is collected in this range so make sure that you really in depth understand in any data technique not only a linear regression but in any data technique uh, it is very important that you you see the uh, the effect of data on the linear model i will provide you with or i will uh, have you uh, take an assignment where i'm going to give you <coughs> excuse me a different data set of the height and the age of uh, baby boys, baby girls, so that you can take a look at how uh, the data range actually affects the output, which is the model. So that now you understand that these models are just for prediction and prediction is always prone to error because the resulting output is always different depending on the model. All right, so now what does that mean? This means the, inter the interpretation is, is true, is correct. Is at birth, this model predicts that the height of the bebe would be 64.928. Now, if you are a brilliant student, and you are, I think, you can write dot, or a period, and continue by saying, uh, we'd like to note here that the data set uh, uh, used for uh, building or interpreting the model ranges from 18 months to 29 months. Meaning, if you're smart enough, read between the lines, manager, and understand that uh, even though this is what the model predicts at x equals zero, but the data is not containing x equals zero. A similar example to that, lovely people, is when I take the next example, which is Mao pa Palace. Mao Palace is just a very uh, a, a rice bowl kind of restaurant. And we got a data set of demand, which is the predicting the number of balls sold 
uh, when we are changing the price. So sometimes we want to put the price in a discount. So we want to predict how the demand changes as well. And well, you can't use the same data set and the same line, the model here. You can't use the same model to predict the number of dishes being sold in a Michelin star restaurant or in a luxury restaurant or in a restaurant that doesn't serve rice ball, or in a restaurant maybe in a different country. So I believe now it comes naturally to you that there is, uh, and the context is very it's, it's, uh, um, crucial, and there's context sensitivity is important for you as a researcher. It's not only about the techniques. I always tell my students, uh, trust me, uh, nowadays with Python, everything is a kind of encapsulated, encapsulated, like in a capsules of black boxes. You can do linear regression in only one line, one line of code. And we are losing the meaning, of, the, 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 the focus here is to cultivate and to, to learn as many techniques as possible, uh, how to do it step by step, but, under, but understanding you might fall short understanding the technique, when to use it, how to formulate a certain question that this technique answers is as important. Also, lovelies, uh, let me just uh, carry on with the here before I get into another topic. So we are done with the interpretation of the intercept. Now, we also last time interpreted the, uh, the coefficient of the x. So uh, we talked about how this formula is y, uh, excuse me, uh, y equal a plus bx could also be written as y or f of x or y as you wish. Let's give it y so that no, no confusion is equal beta 0 plus beta 1 x1 plus you know, guys, I found my pen, but it's broken. The tip is broken, but it's okay. I can buy a new tip, uh, PNXN. This means this is a simple regression. Y equal beta 0 plus beta 1 x1. Only 1 x affecting, you see the, the direction of the arrow, the arrow affecting Y and not vice versa. So we can use linear regression. And over here, we have multiple linear regression. When we have multiple linear regression, we basically are trying to find this f of x that uh, 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 b1, x1, and so on. But over here, x, uh, depending on uh, this way, I don't like to put uh, f of x, so we put it y here because f of x is only for uh, simple linear, linear because you have only one x but over here we have multiple x's so having these all these multiple x's we are going to end up with uh, a, a plane we talked about this also last time and over here it's a line so this line you have only li one line for each x so you will end up with so many lines here end lines that will be connected to each other, uh, uh, um, uh, forming what we call it a plane. All right, so uh, how do we interpret this? W with uh, this kind of formulation, as we increase, is as we move to the uh, uh, right of the x-axis, so as the independent variable increases by one unit, the dependent variable uh, over here, because we have a plus sign, also increases by one unit. If that was a negative sign, that would be decreases by one unit. So now the interpretation is as the baby or as the toddler, actually this is a toddler, as the toddler grows uh, 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 monthly or by one month, uh, his or her height um, increases by an average of or by an estimated value of 0 0.635 uh, centimeter of height. So the height of the baby increases on an average of or by a, an estimated amount of 0 0.635 centimeter as he or she grows by one month. All right. So one student asked me, why do we say one unit and one unit? Because 
I think my I think my interpretation to why we say by this one unit increase causes this uh, unit decrease is because y is here uh, is uh, always we say y equal we don't say two y equal and if we have two y equal we will always divide over two so that we can get y equal so we are investigating here how one unit of y is affected by one unit so basically we are standardizing here the y so y always is one uh, one y we don't have two y uh, if you do then please divide over two so this is why whatever here coefficient for the x uh, this coefficient will explain how one increase in this will affect uh, the increase in that which is would be uh, the coefficient of x all right all right, so what's next? This is all what we covered last time. Uh, also, another thing that we covered last time, very quickly to, do, to take you through it, is uh, how do we choose the, uh, the uh, best line? Because we talked about how we can draw, systematically we can draw multiple lines because we have a very brilliant student, my dual. He said, we are gonna draw the line that goes uh, through all, most of the, of the points. But in some typologies, you might have uh, two, two lines going through five different points of the data set. So which line do you uh, choose? So your next uh, realization would be drawing the line that the vertical distance between the actual point. So if this is the line and these are over here, actual uh, points, then you take the vertical distance here and take the vertical distance here take the vertical distance here, take the vertical distance here, vertical distance here, vertical distance here, the line that satisfies the minimum sum of all these uh, distances, which we call them the errors, or we actually not call them errors, but rather residuals. We call them residuals here that minimizes. So it is an optimization problem that minimizes the sum of all the distances. So the error is nothing but the distance and this distance is measured by the vertical, uh, dropping the vertical line here on, this is a predicted value. So we call it P as a predicted value. And these beautiful points over here, including any point that might actually lay accidentally on the line, these are actual values or we call them also observed, observed values, because we observed them and we recorded them in our experiment in the data collection. So basically the residual over here is a distance of actual minus predicted. However, as I told you, there are two reasons. The first reason for getting actual minus predicted squared, which is First of all, this is a Euclidean distance, so it doesn't come from uh, uh, luck or no or no uh, theoretical foundation. Uh, the a minus p is a distance, but a minus p we cannot use it because if we have two actual points over here of a similar distance away, let's let's draw it a bit re more realistic, with a similar distance away uh, from the line, this actual over here a one and this is a two and this is the predicted value is similar. A1 minus P is equal to A2 mi minus P. Uh, however, it's not really equal. The absolute value is equal. However, this one is A1 is greater than B1, so this will be greater than zero, the value, while uh, A1 minus uh, P, which is greater than uh, A1, A2 here is less than P, because on the y-axis, if you see on the y-axis, this will be, for example, here. But on the y-axis, this will be here. So this is a greater. The p is a greater than a2. Uh, and as you can see here, a1 is greater than p. So a1 is greater than p, and p is greater than a2. So the distance between a minus p over here is uh, uh, positive. However, the distance a minus p is negative. So you can take the absolute value, but there is no theoretical foundation that can support that, especially when we're talking about uh, a multi-regression or multi-linear regression. So with multi-linear with multi regression, 
we are uh, uh, talking about multiple axes. With multiple axes, I told you we're talking about a plane, not necessarily a line. This is why I also talked about the plane. We have multiple lines all together will, will form a plane. So this means that if we get any uh, point here, uh, y and another y, uh, these uh, points is as if you are measuring the distance between one corner of your uh, room that you are sitting in to the other corner diagonally. So this means that it's not on the same floor. It's not a, a point on the floor and another point on the floor. It's a point on the floor and another point on uh, like a, a point in the air. Elevated, elevated point. Think about it of this analogy and you will find out that you can, in fact, if this is the floor and here's another point and you would like to find this distance here between an actual and a predicted, then you can use the Pythagoras theory, which is basically if this is A and this is B, it's, it will be A squared plus B squared. So it will be the sum of these distances. And this distance, basically, if you want, uh, let's say that this is um, over here, the predicted, and this is, let's say, uh, this is uh, A1, and this is A2. Uh, two, um, uh, let's not, um, predicted, let's put it here. And let's say this is a1 and this is a2 as you can see here it's the same it's almost the same topology um, it's a vertical uh, dropping it in a vertical uh, sense uh, this is just an example really I, I should come up with a better example so in any way this will be uh, Think of it this way and then you need this is equal to the distance a for example here a squared so it will be the square root of this plus this however uh, with uh, 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 with the th theory and all that the sum of squared distances uh, that would be the Euclidean distance and then you can find uh, basically minimize this uh, least squared so we call it the least square. This kind of mentality or this kind of algorithm, this kind of technique, we call it the least squared. So this will be the least squared. All right. So because you want the least, minimize the squared. Here are the squared uh, differences. So this will be the Euclidean distance. All right. Uh, this is what we covered last time and uh, I would like to show you right now uh, how to uh, or maybe in a, in a second video uh, because this video is getting too long and this video is optional for those who would like to um, uh, review with me what we covered last time so I'll see you in the next video